So Disney Plus has a new set of shows that really go into the background of how comics are made, the people behind them, really to explain what's going on. It's it's a better version of this channel, a much better version of this channel. So uh, let's we, we, we've got one up here, right here. It's uh, it's the making of Iron Man 2020. I, I reviewed that book, and this is surely going to give me a, a deeper, better insight into that comic, and probably a, a great appreciation too. Let let let's take let's take a look. I got focus, focus. The minute the ball drops, it's 2020. Arnold Stark is officially Iron Man. The future is now. And what next? What? What else? Um, oh, come on, Danny. Written comics for almost 30 years. You can do this. Oh, tweet. I... Oh, son of a... Hey everybody, this is Perch. There's a term in wrestling, if you're a wrestling fan, uh, that's called exposing the business. And basically what that means uh, for wrestling is that a untalented or bored or unprofessional wrestler goes to the ring and then you know, basically shows that the, how the moves are done through ineptitude or through laziness, uh, basically is like punching away, but there's like a mile of dead air between the wrestler and the punch. Or maybe another wrestler is setting them up to do their signature move, and the wrestler is, is so egotistical or so bored that they don't bother to, to sell it, meaning to pretend like it hurts. They just kind of stumble around goofy. And it's called exposing the business. And it got really bad, if you're a wrestling fan, in this uh, one wrestling company called WCW toward the end of its life, where people like Hulk Hogan and, and Kevin Nash and Scott Hall and others would just, you know, could not give any cares about what it is they were doing. They would show up and just half-ass their moves. And uh, it, was, it was called exposing the business. And it was dangerous because the whole you know, production and premise of wrestling was somewhat built on the idea that it was real. I mean, most fans knew it wasn't, but still, you, you wanted to kind of pretend that there was some magic to it, that there was some, some realness to it. Because if everything was a complete sham, then you know why would people show up and just watch things that are obviously shams? At this point, a lot of wrestling fans have to look each other in the mirror, look themselves in the mirror, and admit that they're there for you know basically a soap opera with, with underwear. And, and that's... <laughs> No, nobody wants to do that. So uh, what does that have to do with the new Marvel 616 series? Well, th this episode, uh, and there's there's several on there, is basically giving you a behind-the-scenes look at the comic business, and it's supposed to really take you into the magic of comics. And there is a magic. There's an art to it, uh, and there's a lot of, of moving plates. So one of the things that this show attempts to accomplish is, is to explain to you that it's not just, you know, people sitting around and drawing some fun pictures and coloring them up and it's easy, no problem. They really want to communicate to you that it's hard. And what better way to do it than the first event of 2020, Iron Man 2020, written by Dan Slott, uh, art by Pete Woods, Christios Gage uh, came in to co-write it. And so we, we, we this, this video is designed to kind of give us an inside look at the people involved and also it wants to communicate something called the Marvel Method. Now, you, you know, what is the Marvel Method? The reason Stan started doing the Marvel Method, quite frankly, is he didn't really have time to write those full scripts. This is what I was looking for. And so he was leaning very heavily on his artists to do a lot of the heavy lifting of figuring out all of the incident. They were as much the writer as Stan was. There's a classic story in the 1960s. Stan and Jack Kirby met to talk about their next Fantastic Four story. And when Jack sends the, the first issue in, Stan goes through it, and suddenly there's this page where there's this guy on a surfboard flying through space. He calls Kirby up and says, what's the deal with this guy, Jack? And Kirby tells him, well, a demigod like Galactus would have a herald to go before him to scout out planets for him to consume. 
I put them on a surfboard. Kids are into surfing these days. It's a contemporary thing. And the character kind of took off from there. And so this is all fine, right? I mean, in, in theory, the Marvel method and, and kind of what they're talking about, it, it sounds like a really nice collaboration between the writer and the artist where you have two people crafting that story as a team. And, and what could possibly be wrong with that? Well, nothing except the video then goes into a lot of kind of depths to show that Dan Slott is a complete incompetent fool who can't make his, you know, schedules on time. He's, he's shown over and over kind of joking around about being late, uh, looking kind of just like a, a bumbling guy in the office and, and somewhat unapologetic. And I don't know if this is how the editors of the show intended it or not, but then you get these scenes of, you know, the artist and the letter and the artist is looking like exhausted and tired and, and like, you're putting a lot of the work on me and, you know, I'm having to pencil and ink it and, Meanwhile, there's this guy who's joking around about, you know, being interrupted on Twitter while he's supposed to be doing his script. And and then it, it also kind of dives deep into, you know, Tom Brevoort shows that or talks uh, rather about how Dan is late and he can't keep a schedule and he's been doing comics for all this time, but he's he's unreliable in that sense. And you know, not in the most flattering way. But then they also show him kind of bending over backwards to get him a co-writer and work with him and figure out what's going on. And then meanwhile, uh, you see clips like this one from the letterer that I, I don't know if they were going for laughs or not, but it, it does not come across as like, yay, team. It comes across like, well, well, I mean, take a look at it for yourself. Because Dan works in the Marvel method, I'm usually waiting longer than I am from everyone else. If I have no script, I'm just looking at art and there's nothing I can do. Oh yeah, Joe is the person I feel most guilty about. By the time I get the script from Dan, it's usually about two days before the book has to go to press. I'm always sending a text or emailing, begging and pleading, someone please send me some script. And and that would all be kind of funny, I guess. I mean, you got the jokey music in there and it's like, oh, look at this guy. You see a Christmas tree there in the background. His holiday sucks. <laughs> it's hilarious. Hilarious, right? Well, I mean, that's the tone they're going for and they do achieve it. I mean, again, the, the problem is the whole uh, show is filled up kind of in the first half with a lot of really jokey silliness like like this. Hey! I wouldn't have been funny if it broke. And then on top of that, like I mentioned earlier, Tom Brevoort seems completely aware that this guy is uh, is not professional, seemingly can't do his job on time, needs help and other things. I mean, enough to that they're putting this out, but it's all kind of like, ah, ha, ha, ha. and again, it's not said in the video because they, they, they again keep stressing the Marvel method, the Marvel method over and over, but it's hard not to look at this. And if you're an artist or a colorist or a letterer and you're you're watching this video, you have to think like, you ass, because you see comments like this. We've been planning this for ages. We've been we've been seeding this for a very so long time. So I know time. you've got a lot of ideas and very little actually put together. <laughs> and, and, and you need more time to get it done. I, I would I, because it's not good enough and you need more time. I, I think I could make it better. We use the term work loosely when it comes to Dan. Dan's terrible with his deadlines. But no, but this, you'll, be the, you'll be the famous writer of Iron Man 2022. God. <laughs> no, no pressure at all or anything. <laughs> no oh, problem. Oh. <laughs> I've worked with Dan for a quarter of a century, and fortunately he's good enough at this that those strengths help to counterbalance the fact that he is his own worst enemy when it comes to being able to produce things. And, and like, what are you supposed to make of this, uh, right? I mean, it, it is it is just a, it, it feels very tone deaf. It's definitely slanted toward the writer because the writers, ah, they're unreliable and goofy. And this just slams all the work uh, down on, on the artist. There's even a sequence in the video where for no apparent reason, 
it veers into Dan Slott complaining about social media, which is also strange because the show opened with him getting distracted by Twitter and how fun it was. But then he he wants to talk about how he killed Peter Parker, which which he's gone to the well on that like way too many times. Like it's it's whenever he wants to talk about maybe how he's bad at fan engagement and everything else, it's people were mad at me for killing off Peter. But I mean, here's the thing. Nobody really thought Peter Parker was dying. Everybody, everyone knew it was a storyline. And so it, it's this this idea that, oh, man, I did this really super brave, crazy thing that everybody got mad about. It's, it's just ridiculous. But the, the whole the whole thing is silly. And then it's it's finally it's capped off with with uh, the the optimistic look of, of having to go through all this garbage again. So the first issue's done. So now we just need to do it five more times. <laughs> <laughs> and all of our lead time is done, is but, gone. That's, you know, but that's part of the magic of comics. It is. That, you know, it takes pressure to make diamonds. <laughs> it takes pressure to make diamonds. Well, I, I mean, other than the fact that this series was a bomb, but I mean, that really doesn't matter. The Disney Plus audience isn't reading the uh, Iron Man 2020 storyline anyway. And so the show is really designed to be kind of an encapsulation of the magic of making comics with the quirky, unreliable writer who can't meet deadlines and, and is goofy and and all the rest. And, you know, his hard nosed editor who's who's been through it all before and is sticking him to the schedule, but still knows how to laugh at the end of the day. And then all the poor bastards who work on the rest of the comics, we don't really care about them. That they're they they'll they'll do the work. I mean, you know, it's it's a Marvel method. I, I like I said at the beginning, there's there's this thing, this this concept of exposing the business, and you don't want to do it. The idea is that exposing the business is a bad thing. You want to maintain the illusion of of magic and that uh, there's cool stuff going on, and you don't really want to make it a jokey. Yeah, for lack of a better word, shit show, which is what what we got. It's selfish, it's self-centered, it thinks the way a cat thinks. It's one of the times that I end up rewriting Chris, and then Chris looks at what I rewrote, and he maybe he'll rewrite it again, and I go, okay, now we're on the right path. Now we're both thinking like a cat, instead of thinking about cat things. It's curious, if you were an artist, a letter, if you're somebody at Marvel, and you're watching this, you can't feel great about working for this company, particularly when there's a big pressure, lower page rates to get things in faster, to do the penciling and the inking and everything else. And meanwhile, you have these guys kind of joking about screwing over the creative team. Uh, you know, I, I mean, that's, that's not going to leave a good feeling in your mouth. It's just, it's, it's not, uh, it, it's, it's, it's weird. Uh, the Marvel method is something that has been discussed over and over and over again. It feels like year by year, it gets more watered down and more kind of you know, code for we we do kind of random, crazy, last minute shenanigans. But looking at this video and seeing this, you know, the players involved, and I, I recommend people go to Disney Plus if you're subscribed, check it out. There's others up there too. And you really kind of it, you know, if you've ever opened up a comic book and going, what's going on? Why is this misspelled? Why is this stuff like this? It's like, well, uh, this video does a pretty good job of laying out that case as to why. If you want to know, you remember the big controversy a while back about the Batgirl issue where the door was drawn in front of the bathtub and everybody talked about failing quality and the artist was a, was a jerk and, the, you know, the gym shooter would have never stood for this. Um, sure, but, you, you know, maybe, maybe another reason is the artist was working with a writer doing this kind of crap and is like, yeah, I'll put the door in front of the bathtub. I mean, screw it. Um, I mean, I don't know. You should take pride in your work. You absolutely should. But it's, it's a, this is a weird business exposing video that I, I think I, I don't know. I'm going to show it to, uh, to my wife uh, later, see what she thinks of it in terms of, uh, what do you think? Every time I show her stuff like this though, she's like, you're, you're, you're never opening a comic store again. This <laughs> every time. So maybe not a good idea to show this kind of stuff. But anyway, this is Marvel 616. It's on Disney Plus. You can check it out. It's a, it's a, I, I can't believe this is up. I, I just can't believe they would put this out there because it's, it, it does not help the business any. It, it like takes a lot of kind of the worst things people say about the business and it throws it up on the screen and kind of makes jokes about it. And it's, I don't know how many people are going to be laughing. Um, I guess the audience that doesn't buy comics might go, <laughs> look at those wacky people making comics. <laughs> I remember comics back when I was a kid. It cost a nickel. Crazy. 
it, that must, I, I don't know. That's, that's gotta be the audience. I, I, I don't know. Um, but anyway, what do you think? Did you watch this video? Um, you know, watch the whole thing. I, I obviously have a couple little segments uh, here. You, you have, this is for review purposes. You have to actually watch the, the video to see the whole thing. Uh, plenty of nuance and context, but not, not much more <laughs> than what you're seeing here. So let me know what you thought if you watched it. Like, subscribe, click the bell for notifications. Most importantly, though, uh, of course, and, and as always, thanks for listening. Thank <laughs> you.